afternoon, and welcome to this week's edition of It Could Be You. I'm your host, John S. I'm back in the studio, and I've got a couple of representatives from a most interesting, and for me, it was a very, very intellectually stimulating number of people that I met, and they go by a title that, well, it's going to get some people out there just kind of their, it's going to put their teeth on edge, because I've got representatives from the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers in the studio. And we're going to start talking about what the society is all about, have a little discussion about some of the things that Freethinkers has been involved with, and the phone lines, or phone line, I should say, will be open uh, just very, very shortly. So any of you have any comments, keep them clean. And any of you have any questions about Freethinkers, you can definitely call in and talk to them directly. But first things first, a couple of... Uh, uh, bits of information I need to bring with you. Uh, first of all, first of all, a reminder that the quarterly pledge drive, the quarterly fundraiser for KABF is going to kick off this Saturday. And it is for something that's really, really high priority, and that is to raise money for new station, studio, recording, etc., etc., equipment. So you'll get more information about that once the um, uh, fundri fundraiser, the pledge drive kicks off. But any of you out there, uh, start thinking about how you're going to be able to support and contribute to KABF for this much-needed new equipment. Now, uh, some meetings to come up. And the first one, I got this uh, from the Veterans Mental Health Council. And they're, they're going to be having, I guess, their monthly meeting today. In fact, it's going to kick off at 3 o'clock and run until 5. And it's going to be at the Arkansas State Veterans Home, the Community Center, at 2401 John Ashley Drive in North Little Rock. And if you need more information, you can contact Tanya Phillips. That's Tanya Phillips at C, as in Charles, A, V for Victor, M as in man, H, C for Charles, C A V M H C at gmail.com. Or if you can call 501 247 5911, 247 5911, and you'll get a hold of Tanya Phillips. Okay, and this council, please note, is run by veterans for veterans. And tomorrow, uh, there is going to be a candlelight celebration on the Arkansas Capitol steps starting from 7 in the evening and going on until 8. And this is a celebration celebrating Mental Health Awareness Month and Children's Mental Health Awareness Day. And if you need more information, you need to contact Angie Lassiter at 501-428-2218 or email Angie.Lassiter, and that's spelled A-N-G-I-E dot L-A-S-S-I-T-E-R at Ymail, the letter Y, mail dot com. There will be a uh, Smarts for Advocacy training that will be available uh, from 10 in the morning until 3.30 tomorrow afternoon, and if you need more information about that, it is 661-1548. And the Arkansas Voices for Children Left Behind, they've got something coming up on Saturday. It's one of two events that are going to be coming up in the very, very near future. The one this Saturday is going to start at 11, and it'll go until 4, and this is the Mother-Child Family Visit. And it's going to be at the ACC East Unit in West Memphis, Arkansas, again from 11 to 4, and a special visit for the mothers who have participated in Arkansas Voices Parenting from Prison classes. There will be activities for mothers and children, caregivers, while class participants implement some of their parenting skills. And free pizza! There will also be help with travel expenses, and it's a valuable day for rebuilding parent-child relationships. You need more information about that. You, uh, one call and let Deanne Newell know that you're attending, 501-366-3647. And the following Friday, the 12th, is going to be the 26th annual Mothers in Prison, Children in Crisis, a public awareness event. And the ACC East Choir will perform. And please come and show your support for these mothers and their children. All advocates for children and families are going to be especially encouraged 
to appear. And again, you need more information about that, 501-366-3647. And one more to bring to you, and that's going to be on Friday, the 12th of May at 6 o'clock, and that's the HOPE group, the Helping Our People Excel. They'll be celebrating their first year anniversary. This will be at 6 p.m., 2200 Kavanaugh in Little Rock, and it's actually at the Pulaski Heights Baptist Church Fellowship Hall. And this, is going, this has been a group that's been around to help individuals with all types of resources, such as employment, housing, education, and treatment slash mental health centers and referrals. And it is especially a support system for people, ex-felons, who have been released back into the community and these persons that have no family support. You need more information? Get in touch with the HOPE group or call Pulaski Heights Baptist Church. It could be you hungry. It could be you homeless. It could be you who's really bothered, who's really disturbed by a lot of things going on, and you have a particular point of view, you have a particular opinion, and it just seems out there that maybe no one is, well, really listening to you, and really no one... They're, they're going to put their fingers in their ears and go, la, 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 I can't hear you, I don't want to hear you, don't confuse my mind with facts, etc., etc., etc. Well, this group, I'm, I've known about them for some time. I was able to reestablish contact with them yesterday, and I'm very glad I did. And I've got two representatives from the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers sitting in the studio with me, and I am going to ask them to start the ball rolling by introducing themselves. Well, I'll go first. I'm uh, Dave Bentley. I'm a past president uh, twice with the organization. I've uh, been a member of the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers for almost 10 years now. Okay. I'm almost, almost pretty much a founding member. All right. And guest number two, please. My name is Ann Orsi. I am the current president of the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I'm the activist in chief at this point. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, you know, for activism, people have to know, first of, all, first of all, what you're doing. But in order to find out what you're doing, what sort of activism that you're representing, how about giving out with some contact information for free thinkers? How, sure. how can people get in touch with you? Sure. We have a website, arfreethinkers.org. Mm -hmm. That's freethinkers with an S, dot mm -hmm. org. Mm -hmm. um, you can contact us through our website. You can find us on Facebook mm -hmm. and on meetup.com where we keep our calendar. And we have events going on every week, multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, for, for instance, um, uh, what, are, what are some of these meetings? What are some of the regular uh, uh, get-togethers or gatherings that you have? We have a lot of social gatherings because one of the main focuses of our group, at least at this point in time, is building a secular community, mm -hmm. building a community of non-believers so that we can get organized for things like activism and for things like uh, providing support to each other that other mm -hmm. people would get through churches. Most mm -hmm. of us don't go to church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I can't think of any of us who go to church. And you know, Unitarians, I think. Well, the Unitarians, <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, but... but uh, most of us don't have a built-in community like that that we belong to or feel mm -hmm. comfortable with, so mm -hmm. we're trying mm -hmm. to create that secular community. We we have a weekly gathering at Damn Good Pies down in the River Market. Uh, Monday evenings we meet for pizza and conversation. On the first Tuesday of every month, which was last night's meeting, uh, we meet at American Pies. There's a beer and pizza theme that's kind of going around through our group. Um, <laughs> but that's the first Monday or first Tuesday of every month, rather. Mm -hmm. And then on the second Sunday of every month, we have what we call our second Sunday Cantina Communion. We mm -hmm. meet at a Mexican restaurant in Southwest Little Rock and uh, enjoy what anyone in church would call fellowship. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, a person, if they go to the Freethinkers website, they can find out about that. Uh, do you have like anything like newsletters or information about upcoming events? Our upcoming events are all on meetup.com. Mm -hmm. And if you search for 
Arkansas Free Thinkers, mm -hmm. you'll find our entire calendar. Uh -huh. In addition to the regular events that we ourselves sponsor, we mm -hmm. are co-sponsors of other events and we promote, cross-promote uh, third-party events like Socrates Cafe and Science After Dark mm -hmm. and Science Cafe, mm -hmm. events like that 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 appeal to our membership and support our mission. Now, all of this, uh, what you've been talking about, uh, and correct me if I get this wrong, is it seems to be like Little Rock or Central Arkansas centered. Are there uh, free thinker or free thinker like groups that uh, are in existence, meeting regularly in other parts of the state. Absolutely. And we always stand ready to help other groups get started. For, the, for example. The most example. recent group that we helped get started and that we are so proud because they're they're doing really good things mm -hmm. are the Batesville Free Thinkers. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a group of uh, Conway, the, Conway free thinkers has been going strong for mm -hmm. a long time. Hot Springs has an active free thinkers group. Mm -hmm. There's a Saline County atheist, atheist and skeptic society, mm -hmm. um, Fayetteville free thinkers and the Northwest Arkansas humanists are probably one of the other most active groups in the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. They, uh, put on a, uh, conference every other year, mm -hmm. uh, called Logicon. Okay, okay. Now, a little while ago, you mentioned a couple of words that, that honest to goodness, they're going to get a few people on edge. You mentioned the word secular, and then you mentioned the word non-believer. Now, to kind of head off people who might be ah! out there, okay, uh, talk about, uh, from the point of view of free thinkers, okay, talk about what you mean by secular and non-believer. Believe it or not, those two terms are not interchangeable. Uh, Non-believers are people who simply don't believe in God or mm -hmm. behave as though there is no God. And right. that would encompass atheists, agnostics, and what we like to call apatheists, those mm -hmm. who simply don't care mm -hmm. <laughs> one way or another. Uh, but, but secular humanists. Secularists, on the other hand, are people who believe that mm -hmm. church and state should be separate mm -hmm. and that, uh, that that is one of the primary prongs of our mission mm -hmm. is the separation of church and state mm -hmm. and to safeguard that. Uh, aspect of the First Amendment that says the state is not going to promote or establish religion and that anyone who wants to practice religion is free to do so in the way that their conscience dictates. Now, one thing, and I, I bring this up from time to time, and I think this is a good point to remind everybody, that one of the main reasons that the First Amendment, as far as religion is concerned, one of the main reasons that it was set up was that unlike the situation in a number of countries outside other than the United States. The government, the state, if you will, has a recognized, state-supported, state-backed, state-funded religion. And in England, in the United Kingdom, if you will, it's the Church of England, the Anglican. You would know it here as the Episcopalian Church. And that was one of the things that the people who wrote the Constitution were very, very concerned about. They're saying, okay, you do have the right to worship as you see fit, but the state cannot and must not set up one religion where, whether you are a member of it or not, you're going to be contributing some of your tax dollars to the upkeep, to the running of this particular, of this one religious organization, religious institution. So people, I'm sermonizing, maybe that's not the <laughs> right word to use with free, well, I'm, I'm editorializing, okay. You can pontificate, that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, but um, that, that's something I think a lot of people frequently get wrong. And, and would I be correct in assuming that is also one of the main points, one of the bases for free thinkers and what y'all are doing, and maybe maybe even kind of clearing up some of the myths and misin uh, myths and misinformation that's out there. Well, I think I think that uh, it's important to recognize that this country was founded at the height of the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many different religious groups that came to this country early on, mm -hmm. and before it became the United States, when it was still colonies. For sure, the states themselves and the colonies themselves 
did establish religion. Many of them did establish religion. Um, and I think the last state established religion was actually done away with, I think around, I could get this date wrong, around 1833. And I want to say it was Connecticut. You're, you're in the right area. It, it was the one of the last gasps of Puritanism right. that you had at the time. And, um, uh, and what a lot of people don't understand is that when you have groups such as the Puritans who set up uh, their colonies, and they wanted to have freedom of religion, but it was to practice it as they saw it. And ironically, if you disagreed with the Puritan point of view, you were most pointedly unwelcome. You know, my favorite ancestor, I'm into genealogy, so I, I do this, right? Mm -hmm. My favorite ancestor is Anne Marbury Hutchinson. Uh -huh. who was run out of the Boston colony in 1636 for daring to suggest that God's grace and not good acts were the things that saved people. Well, um, so she was a woman who was doing that, too. <laughs> well, she was an uppity woman who was <laughs> preaching, and yeah, that, that didn't go over well with John Winthrop either. But nonetheless, uh, dissenting views were not accepted. Uh, her sister, Catherine uh, Marbury Scott, who was one of the wives of the family, founding members of Providence, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, was was also uh, uh, disliked pretty intensely by John Winthrop, who famously wrote in his diary about her that she was afflicted with Quakerism. Uh -huh. So, you know, th there were a lot of competing different religious traditions, and people were mm -hmm. being prosecuted and mm -hmm. persecuted. She was whipped for her, uh, stripped to the waist, naked, and whipped in, in public in Boston oh, for her that, that's, Quakerism. That, that's because God is on my side. You're in the wrong. God is on my side. Right, right. And of course, she thought God was on her side. And I, you, I, I, I think the jury's still out on whose side God's on, whether or not he even cares anymore. Well, well, then, then taking a look at, at what I'm sure has been thrown at uh, people who follow free thinking, okay? Godless, communist, dirty reds, uh, well, yeah, I dare you to come back at me with an answer for that. We have a lot of conservative oh, and libertarian yes. members. <laughs> we're, you know, we're we're not communists. We're not we're not any political affiliation. I'll admit there are more of us who are pretty liberal than anything else. But yeah, we we have the political spectrum within our group, and and you can see some feisty discussions that go on about just about every issue. I have seen oh, yeah. and heard. Yeah, now David Silverman, the uh, president of American Atheists, has recently attended the last two or three uh, CPAC conventions, mm -hmm. Conservative Political Action Committee, and he's out there to promote atheism and giving out buttons, and he, he basically says that all, all the young and up-and-coming Republicans are on his side, really? and they're apparently waiting for the old guard to die out. Interesting. And we we see that a lot because there there's so many surveys that say that millennials of the millennials they're anywhere from 33 to 40 percent of them are unchurched which means they've left church now whether they've left belief or not is a different issue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they're not relating to what's going on in church and they don't really care to go back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well what I'm going to uh, do is uh, the phone line is open for any of you who have any comments and I said keep them clean. Uh, and or questions. To, we can play dirty. No, 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 no. We don't want to get the FCC no, no, on no. it, but that's another story. But uh, the phone line is open, and it's 501 if you need the area code, 433-0088. 433-0088. So if you have a question, comment, call, talk to them, ask your question. Let's add to the pool of thinking persons. Okay. Now, a lot of what you were talking about, okay, it, it strikes me that someone who would be looking for free thinkers would find them in some, maybe some of the large, larger communities, larger cities, including here in Arkansas, Little Rock, uh, Jonesboro, Fayetteville, and so on. Now, what, what about someone who's fed up, for one reason or another, with the established view, and they're living in a small town? How, how, did, how would that kind of affect someone uh, who would be taking a look at free thinking or something along similar lines because, like I said, they're just fed up with just the same 
information being given to them again, 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 and again. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they have the internet yes. because they're not going to have a whole lot of like-minded people around mm -hmm. them in, in small towns in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, what we find most often is that, even in Little Rock for that matter, mm -hmm. people stay closeted. They don't admit their non-belief. They don't admit mm -hmm. that they have doubts or that they have uh, they have questions mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. about uh, the, the basic aspects of the religion that they've either grown up in or that mm -hmm. they've joined as adults or that their families are members of, they don't talk about it. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, the, the people around them, if, if they find that they don't believe in God or that they're questioning the existence mm -hmm. of God or questioning the teachings of the popular preacher in town, uh, they, they find that they're ostracized. Mm -hmm. They're shunned. Mm -hmm. They can lose their jobs. They lose their families. Um, it, we have parents who kick kids out of homes. We have, uh, we have employers who tell people they're not welcome to work there anymore. We have friends who shun each other. Lifelong friends. You don't believe in God anymore? Well, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. You're not the person I thought you were. I don't want that lightning bolt to hit me if I'm standing anywhere close to you there or something like that. And, yeah, and it's devastating for the and, and that's why people don't often reach out because mm -hmm. it's terrifying to know that you're going to lose mm -hmm. your entire social network and support mm -hmm. in your community if you do that. Your job, your livelihood, your family, possibly your children. Mm. So, you know. It, well, and it's not without precedent. Uh, you, you hear the stories that come out about um, uh, uh, some of the younger people within, say, the Amish or Mennonite communities. They, they go out and experience the wide open world. And if they want to stay with the world, yeah, they're, they're con all contact is cut off. For someone who comes out as atheist to a, an extremely conservative religious family, that is really not much different. And I, I'm jumping uh, to conclusions, perhaps, but mm -hmm. in looking over, in looking over some of the information that you provided me, okay, you, you, there's a tremendous emphasis on finding community, finding community, and and what right. you've just been talking about is the, if you will, the lifeline that people who need to know that they're not alone. They, they, can, they can find community. They can find community with, with the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers, with the local Freethinkers group, and wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And if there's not one, we'll help get one started. But finding community is, is essential to any human being's well-being. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are social creatures. We do need community, mm -hmm. and we need support. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when we don't have that anymore, we have all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, community is, is absolutely vital. Right. And even, like, even if they can't get out, like you mentioned, the Internet, they can come to one of our several Facebook groups and hash out their problems there and mm -hmm. talk with like-minded folks. Mm -hmm. one, one of the groups that we have uh, tried kind of unsuccessfully to get off the ground, we've, we've had several goes at it, is to have a uh, regular support group for people who are recovering from religious trauma. What, what, what do you mean exactly by religious trauma? A lot of it has to do with being ostracized by family when they come out as atheists. And religious trauma affects a lot more people than just atheists, mm -hmm. because even if they are believers, religious trauma affects people who are on the LGBT spectrum, for example, whose families reject them because of religion. These people may not have rejected religion, but religion has certainly rejected them to the best of their well, ability. And, and what, what about uh, you know, what we see pop up in the news from time to time, the, um, the revelation, if you will, of people who maybe especially as children were physically emotionally and or sexually abused by members of, if you will, the clergy. Sure. There's, there's religious trauma takes a whole lot of, of different uh, aspects. I'm a lawyer, and for years I practiced family law, and one of my earliest cases that absolutely broke my heart was a woman who came to me for a divorce. Mm -hmm. She and her husband worked for a local church, mm -hmm. and the husband was 
one of the clergy, I think he was a youth minister or music director or something along those nature, Mm -hmm. along that nature, and was actually being paid a salary. She also was working full time for the church, but because they were married, the church was paying her husband and not paying her. Mm -hmm. When they separated, first of all, she was ostracized from the church because she dared to leave her husband, Uh despite the fact that he was physically and emotionally abusive to her. But her income was cut off. She had no way of getting any unemployment or anything like that because the church said, well, that was your husband's salary, even though you were working full time. And, you know, that's religious trauma right there. That's that's Mm -hmm. abuse by a religious organization against someone based on their gender or agenda, perhaps. (laughs) <laughs> could be, could be. But yeah, we, we have knowledge of people who have admitted to their churches as adults mm-hmm. decades after the fact that perhaps they got an abortion mm-hmm. uh, when they were a teenager or in their early 20s before they were married. Uh, one woman that I can think of right off the top of my head was very active in her church's youth group. She baked uh, cookies and and was there to chaperone. And when she admitted to her minister that she had had an abortion before her marriage 20 years before, Mm -hmm. she was told never to step foot in the youth group again because, well, she was obviously a bad influence on those children. Uh Uh-huh. And, you know, it's it's trauma like that and it's treatment like that that, that really does traumatize people. Mm-hmm. Well, even in a good Christian loving home like what I grew up in, uh, in my situation, uh, I get along great with my parents. Uh, we, were, we were Church of Christ. They still are. Uh, just growing up as a child, I really just couldn't buy into it. Mm-hmm. And I just remember lots of nights just waking up in a cold sweat. During a thunderstorm, is this is this the second coming? Is this it? Oh, am mm-hmm. I going to go to hell? Mm-hmm. And and it, it's very traumatic, even even these even in, in good stable homes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for children. And and again again, you're what what you've been talking about. It could be considered like a free thinker outreach. That um, if there's anyone out there, if there's anyone out there who has, if you will, doubts, questions, they need information. Even, even, you know, let, let's say that uh, they, they can get in contact with free thinkers. They can get in contact with secular humanist groups. And even if they don't, if you will, become full-fledged members, you're still there to provide information. You're still there to provide information where they can, on their own, put, if you will, the equivalent of putting a two and two together. We we don't try to convert anybody. We recognize that that most people are always on a journey mm-hmm. to decide what what really is best, mm-hmm. and and as such, we do want people to contact us. We want them to find us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, join. I mean, we've got a Facebook page, and our Facebook groups are secret or closed for a reason because mm-hmm. sometimes if other people find out you're a member of it, then they the damage the, the, the damage gets mm-hmm. done that way. So we've closed all of our groups, but we will admit anyone who mm-hmm. says that they are either questioning or experiencing religious trauma or are atheist, agnostic, secular. Uh, I mean, we have plenty of religious people in our groups, mm-hmm. um, but but those who are devoted to separation of church and state and believe that that uh, things need to be done to, to kind of correct that harm. Okay. Now, we're at the bottom of the hour already, and this is really something the half hour, the first half of the program <laughs> is just shot by. We're going to take a break for just a bit over a minute, and then we're going to be back. We'll be in the second half of this week's edition of It Could Be You. John S., We'll be back in a little over a minute. Hang in there. We just barely started. John S., back with you in the studio. And for those of you who missed the first few minutes of the program, I've got a couple of wonderful, fascinating people to talk with today. They represent, and again, this may get some people's teeth on edge, but they're with the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers. But we've been having a really, really good conversation. And I'd like for my two guests to reintroduce themselves and, again, give contact information to how all interested parties can get in touch with the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers. I'm Ann Orsi. I'm the president of the Arkansas Society of Freethinkers. And I'm Dave Bentley, past president twice and longtime member for about 10 years. And you can contact us on, uh, on the website. Our website is arfreethinkers.org. And we're also on Facebook and on Meetup. We've got our great calendar of events. 
Okay, all right. Now, one thing that um, uh, I learned early on about free thinkers, and this is something that really made me stop and take a look because I've been a longtime member of higher education. And in the particular work that I was trying to do with students, I was trying to emphasize something that, that looks to be part and parcel of the free thinker, secular humanist, however you want to describe it, experience. And that is to instill, to support, to endorse what has been called critical thinking. Critical thinking should be taught, in my opinion, uh, to children who are extremely young Why? and should be continued throughout their lives. Why? Because critical thinking is a way of analyzing the world around you and coming to a good decision. When you mm -hmm. look at something uh, f from different points of view, when you examine the facts and analyze the bases from, from which an argument is coming mm -hmm. or if you're able to look at what kind of proof there is and determine whether or not it's good proof or not, mm -hmm. you're able to make much better decisions about everything in life. And and what and the way you're saying it, the way you're putting it, may is, is for sure that this is not an exclusive proprietary thing that's controlled by free thinkers and only free thinkers. Well, of course not. I logic and reason should be something that are employed by everyone every single day and too often we hear that you've just got to trust me or you got to have faith or just believe me on this. My and words good enough. It's it's not. And and not only that with with the onslaught that we have faced in recent years of what we call fake news or uh -huh. bad news and there's not just bad news. There are there are sites on both the left and the right that engage in so much hyperbole and hysteria that you're not real sure what they're saying to you. Oh, oh, well, well, as long as long as as long as you kind of believe that uh, you know it's my way, my way is the right way. I'm I'm right. All of y'all are wrong. Well, one one of the things that we like to say is that you know this is my opinion. And you can always change my mind with good evidence and a valid argument. Which is part and parcel of critical thinking. That That is exactly what we're saying. And, it, you know, it, whether it's the existence of God or whether you should vaccinate your children or whether creationism or mm -hmm. evolution is true or how the universe got started, all of these things, whether climate change is real, that's kind of big right now. Uh -huh. um, you know, all of these things need to be evaluated critically and logically and with reason rather than with hysteria and confirmation bias. We, we, it, just because we don't want something to be true doesn't mean that suddenly it's not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people seem to have no problem with critical thinking when it comes to buying a used car or what channel I should watch or what, which politician I should believe. But for some reason, when it comes to religion, it gets a special pass. We're not supposed to question that at all, Even despite the fact that there's over a thousand different denominations, Christian denominations in America alone right now. Right. You can go to Wikipedia and just look up the list of Christian. Mm -hmm. It goes on and on. You just keep and scrolling. Not, and not just in Christianity either. Right. So many, so many of the other mm -hmm. really major religions of the world. You're, you're going to find the divisions. You're going to find the uh, differing right. Sunnis and Shias, and yeah. for sure, Orthodox as well as, uh, as well as Reform in the Jewish community, for example. They all can't agree on their own scriptures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I was also very, very surprised. At, oh, and by the way. 433-0088. Those of you who have questions, those of you who have comments, okay. Um, uh, they're kind of sitting here. They're, they're kind of uh, looking at me, kind of giving me kind of a hard look, daring me to kind of pass on. If anybody out there, well, they, they dare you to call in with questions, comments. <laughs> they're ready, willing, and able to answer. But before, uh, bef before anyone else comes in, let me kind of throw this at you. I was also very, very surprised to read from time to time, for example, in local media, that free thinkers are not always limited, just like to these uh, gatherings that you've been talking about, to have uh, exchanges of information, good conversations, and so on. That there are times when free thinkers is going to get a little bit more, for lack of a better word, involved 
in various po uh, process, be it political, be it legal. And there's one that um, uh, if you're wanting or willing to talk about something that Freethinkers is kind of prepared to do. We have a state legislature who wants to put erect a monument to the Ten Commandments on the state capitol lawn. The Supreme Court over and over and over again has held that that's a violation of the separation of church and state. State or federal Supreme Court? Federal. Federal. I, th this is the law of the land. And, uh, it, you know, we, we've got this monument. Our legislature went to great efforts during this past session. We had uh, a, a guy from the uh, Leewood Thomas, who's been on your show before, right. in fact, joined us for, mm -hmm. for an earlier episode, mm -hmm. uh, sponsored uh, and, and submitted plans for a wall of separation to be built. Mm -hmm. uh, and this would be an actual wall that has quotes from founding fathers about why religion and government should be separate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to erect it on the state capitol grounds in response to the Ten Commandments monument. And the legislature passed a law saying that, well, from now on, you can't just donate a monument to the state capitol grounds. It's, you've got to have legislative approval to do it. There's so many monuments on the state capitol grounds that have not had legislative approval in the past. This, this was clearly aimed at preventing the Baphomet statue, which the Satanists have also proposed as a, as a response to the Ten Commandments monument. Mm -hmm. I, I love the, the internet meme that, that went around right after the, the public comments hearing that the uh, state capitol grounds commission held where the one guy got up, uh, I think it was Jeremy Brasher got up and said, you want a Baphomet statue? This is how you get a Baphomet statue. And it, they're exactly right because if they're going to limit uh, the only religious uh, statue on the grounds or monument on the grounds mm -hmm. to promote one aspect and one version of the Ten Commandments. I mean, I, I think everybody knows that the Ten Commandments appear in the Bible a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What everybody may not know is that uh, there are different versions of the Ten Commandments that are accepted by different, even Christian denominations, True. and the Jews don't accept the one that, that Rapert put in his bill. Now, you're, you <laughs> surprise me. Well, there you go. Um, you know, I got that straight from the mouth of a rabbi <laughs> who will be joining the lawsuit, uh, and we do intend to participate in a lawsuit. Uh, I'm going to be participating in it individually. Mm -hmm. The free thinkers have been planning to participate in it and may or may not do so, depending on the advice we get from the attorneys who are going to be bringing the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But we've been working carefully ever since this uh, monument was first proposed and the bill was passed, which I believe was in the 2015 session. It was. Quite a while ago. Yeah, it was in the 2015 session, so it's taken a couple of years to get it off the ground. There's a meeting next week. Mm hmm for the State Capital Grounds Commission uh, for whatever the next step is for the monument. So we're getting closer to whether or not it's actually going to be erected. But it's going to have a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It's going to draw a lawsuit. If, if it is actually erected, there will be a lawsuit. Now, the, 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 as I understand it, filing such a lawsuit okay, ties in with, if you will, the mission statement or the uh, the reason for freethinkers' existence, to keep permanent the separation of church and state. And in, in light of this possible lawsuit that's coming up, we may, we may have covered this before, but I'd like for you to kind of touch on it again if necessary. From the point of view of freethinkers, secular humanists, and so on down the line, why is it so important to act against a definite or perhaps perceived violation of the separation of church and state? Well, I think uh, Christians more than anybody should, uh, should support the church-state separation. Uh, one thing I like to remind uh, uh, Christians about is uh, they nominate, uh, conservatives uh, nominated Mitt, uh, Mitt Romney mm -hmm. uh, in the, um, as their Republican nominee in the 2012 election. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a Mormon. Uh, how are they going to feel when little Johnny comes home from school? Oh, Mommy, let me tell you all about Joseph Smith and the golden plates. 
Ah. And, and suddenly, uh oh, wait a minute, no, I, I think sep church state separation is a good thing now. I, we don't want Johnny learning about that. And historically, there was a very great deal of opposition to the Mormons, just as there was at almost the same time in history, tremendous opposition to the influx of Catholics that were coming in oh, yes. from various areas of Europe. Well, there's still opposition to the Catholics coming in. I mean, no. <laughs> they're all no. coming from south of the border, according to the hysterics in Washington right now, and or in not, other yeah, places. Not history, but hysteria. hysteria. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Okay. But you know, Lord Baltimore. The, the Lord Proprietor of Maryland, Maryland, the colony of Maryland, was Catholic. And his his Protestant officers and, and designated uh, representatives around the colony had to sign something saying that they rejected Catholicism for Lord Baltimore to stay in power. And, well, again, again, you're getting back to what uh, I kind of jokingly referred to earlier in the program is God is on my side. I'm right and everybody else is wrong. Can't you understand that? You know, it, 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 there's so many people who claim to have the, the uh, mouth of God whispering directly into their ears. If we put them all in the same room and let them fight it out, <laughs> I don't know if one would emerge. Demonium. <laughs> I would love to see different denominational clergymen uh, debate each other, but they can't because if you live in those who live in glass houses cannot throw stones. They can't force, you know, defend your. What's your evidence for your doctrine? Well, I can't defend mine either, so I better not ask the question. Now, uh, uh, now this would tie back in to one of the reasons, if not major, one of the support reasons for the lawsuit. But I understand that free thinkers, including free thinkers with the Arkansas Society, okay, that that y'all have gotten involved in other ways of making points of views known and wanting to be sure that critical thinking gets out there to the people who need to be versed in it, who need the training, okay? what, what if, Over the last few months or years, let's say, uh, I, I understand that uh, there have been members of uh, freethinkers who have gotten involved like in public protests, who have uh, submitted things to various publications and so on. What, what, what has been some of the, for lack of a better word, some of the other activism that Freethinkers has gotten involved with. Well, we are always present at the uh, Women's Reproductive Rally, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reproductive Justice Rally. Ooh, now you um, said a dirty word. Again. I know, right? <laughs> um, the best way to stop abortion and to prevent abortion is to make sex education and birth control available. Mm -hmm. When we've got people who say abstinence is the best birth control, they're not actually acknowledging that humans are involved. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to be responsible and pragmatic about how we go about this. Mm -hmm. Nobody is pro-abortion. But for those people who would mandate motherhood and mandate that, that uh, women allow their bodies to be used as incubators against their will, well, then, really should think about what they're doing and saying and imposing on people. Well, then let me throw what to a lot of people are going to be two other dirty words if you put them in the same breath. Planned Parenthood. We love Planned oh, Parenthood. Yes. <laughs> we absolutely, Planned Parenthood does amazing work. Mm -hmm. they, they provide sex education and birth control, mm -hmm. not just to women, but to men. They do it for everyone, all comers. They don't turn anyone away. And, and the great big bugaboo that so many people have against Planned Parenthoods is abortion, abortion. When, uh, when, again, do the critical thinking, and again, correct me if I get this wrong, but of all of the different Planned Parenthood groups that are, are in the United States, the, uh, compared to all of the other work, the other visibility activities that they have, that abortions make up what it, I, I was told it, approximately only three percent. I think it's less than three percent, and not all of the Planned Parenthood clinics actually perform abortions. Yet state legislatures around the country 
are doing their best to shut down Planned Parenthood. So what they're doing is shutting down breast exams. They're shutting down pelvic exams. They're shutting down access to birth control. They're shutting down uh, access for men's health because mm -hmm. men also can go to Planned Parenthood. And uh, um, and that would include that would include um, sex education. Yes, such a dirty word, right? Ah. Well, and, and then from what I, from what I've learned from talking with you, okay, that you, that you're also you in kind of the editorial sense that free thinker involvement in a lot of other areas has come about. Okay, some homelessness, for example. We work closely with the van. We have we have a contingent of members who work very very closely with the van, mm -hmm. and we support the van locally. And mm -hmm. for anyone who doesn't know, and I hope everyone knows what the van, the One Inc., mm -hmm. is and does, and it's a homelessness outreach. And the the man who started it is a religious person, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. doesn't make uh, prayer one of the requirements for people getting help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he gives things free of charge. He gives help free of charge. He provides services free of charge. And he doesn't require anything back from any of the homeless people that he serves. Mm -hmm. And he does amazing work. The whole group does amazing work. And we are very proud to support the van. And I also understand that, uh, that Free Thinkers uh, has gotten involved with various uh, LGBTQ issues as well. We have, for the last two years, since Lucy's Place has been in, has had office space, Mm -hmm. uh, we have sponsored uh, the drop-in uh, uh, space mm -hmm. um, for at least one or two months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, every year, and we'll continue doing that. We're so pleased that Lucy's Place now has a shelter, mm -hmm. and even though it can't serve very, very many people yet in that shelter, it's still serving a whole lot of people who are not in that shelter and who are still homeless. And on days like today, when it's pouring down rain, mm -hmm. when there are floods everywhere, mm -hmm. having a warm, dry place to go is so important. And, and uh, you know, if people are feeling isolated and alone, just have the chance to be able to talk to someone, to kind of unload, if you will, in the best sense of the word. Sure, and make connections and network and, and figure out other places to go and, and possibilities and, you know, maybe, hey, align on a job and mm -hmm. get a cell phone so that you can actually take a call from a prospective employer or send an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, didn't uh, Lucy's Place come about as a result of um, Salvation Army uh, kicking out? And lesbians. Well, that's right, because no other homeless shelters in town other than our house mm -hmm. will accept someone who, or at the time, I, they, some of them may have changed their policy since, but at the time, if, if someone was openly gay or lesbian, uh, then they were asked to leave the shelter. Well. And when 40% of the homeless people under the age of 30 mm -hmm. are gay and lesbian, that's really not providing good services to the homeless community. No joke. No joke. No joke. Well, you know, you, you've talked a lot about the various activities, the various, if you will, stands that free thinkers, secular humanists, et cetera, et cetera, have taken. What, I'd, I'd like to kind of throw this at both of you. What are some other things that you would like for the people to know Again, myth, misinformation, curing, anything like that. What are, what are some other things that you really would like, if, if you had to come down, say, maybe to one or two things, what are, some, what are the one or two things that people need to know about, say, free thinking in general or the Arkansas Society of Free Thinkers in particular? Well, we don't worship the devil. No. <laughs> Nothing supernatural of any kind. <laughs> and we support good science education. Oh, absolutely. We um, were in the science march here this last uh, couple of weekends ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and had a big presence there. Uh, we, we think good quality science education is absolutely important, and that goes hand in hand back to the mm -hmm. issue of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when we have uh, people who are experts in the subject matter telling us that this is what we need to do and we ignore it because it's inconvenient, mm -hmm. we're not thinking mm -hmm. critically. Mm -hmm. And that applies to vaccinations, it applies to climate change, it applies to the pretty much any... Death any penalty. Oh, yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it, well any, anything you'd like to add to that? Any, any, anything that, that you need to make 
clear. I'd just like to reemphasize uh, that church-state separation benefits everyone, uh, like I said, especially mm -hmm. uh, Christian Christians. Mm -hmm. and so you, if you find yourself eventually uh, in the minority religion, mm -hmm. you're not going to be persecuted. Got a call coming in. Let's see if the equipment will take it. KBF, you're on the air. Mr. Moderator, you need to get closer to the microphone so that people can hear you. Yeah. Uh, is this any better? They're close. They're close to the microphone. Any, any questions? Any other comments? Okay. okay, apparently not. Well, that was an easy one. <laughs> okay, well, I think we've been making our voices heard. We are standing close <laughs> enough. Well, I better not go there. Um, now, mm -hmm. let, me, let me throw this at you. The state legislative session has just come to an end. From the perspective of the Society of Free Thinkers, what's your, what's your overall take? If you had to give a report card, let's say, on the 2017 session, what, what, what would you all say? I'd give it a D. It's not the F that it was a few years ago, mm -hmm. but it's a good solid <laughs> D heading towards and a D minus. How has it improved? Yeah. Well, actually, there was a good thing that came out of it, and that was that funding for early childhood education was increased oh, mm -hmm. for the first time in a decade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, early childhood education, education in general, we've, we've got lots of education issues in this country and certainly in the state and most definitely in Little Rock School District where no. I happen to live but but early childhood education has been shown to be a big game changer mm -hmm. if if kids have access to good early childhood education they tend to be more successful in school in general tend to be higher earners tend to go on to graduate from high school mm -hmm. maybe go on to college and uh, get better jobs as a result it gives them a better grounding for their educational future mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and well, how would you score how would you give them the score the grade uh, like like Ann said D sounds about right Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with that, with that in mind then, okay, what about your thoughts on the future of free thinking here in Arkansas in, in light of what was going on in the 2017 session with maybe some of the other things that are happening either locally or nationally? The future for free thought, we, we hope to keep growing. We've oh, got a bunch of younger people who are showing more and more interest in our group and in groups like us. Mm -hmm. And we hope to be able to provide even more services and better community and, and more outreach and make our presence known that we, we are parts of the community. We make up a third of the population oh. in some cases, and we need to be taken seriously by our political leaders, mm -hmm. by our community leaders, mm -hmm. and treated with respect just like everyone else. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the specific uh, statistics for the state of Arkansas, but nationwide, uh, uh, the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, is, is the fastest growing uh, religious segment in the non-believers. People who have really? no... Those are the ones who check none of the above none when of the asked above. what their religion ah, the nuns, is. Yes. And it, it includes people who do believe but aren't going to church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was an 18th century, uh, there was an 18th century uh, concept that developed during the Enlightenment called deism mm -hmm. that would essentially address that. You, you believe, but yet you don't uh, worship through any organized mm -hmm. uh, church we structure have, or anything. We have a number of deists right. among us. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, de deists are basically people who believe that uh, and they were very popular a century ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't believe that there's any God um, fiddling with the knobs or mm -hmm. controlling or answering your prayers or sending you to heaven or hell, but they just, uh, they couldn't answer the question of where, where, where the earth, where the universe came from. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're getting closer to figuring that out. And we know that evolution is true and we know mm -hmm. climate So that's even deism is, is falling by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're almost out of time. So before too much, too many more seconds elapse, one more time, contact information for the free thinkers and just kind of give them, uh, once again, kind of a rundown on uh, events, whether they're special or regular sure, events sure. That, that are going to be coming up. Yes, our contact information, our website is arfreethinkers.org, and we are also on Meetup and Facebook. Just, just uh, search for us under Free Thinkers. Um, and I already mentioned a lot of the things we do. We have our monthly uh, uh, 
beer and pizza meeting. Mm -hmm. we, um, every Monday, weekly, we have another uh, meeting at um, Damn Good Pies down in the River Market. Uh, something she did mention, uh, we do healthy things too. We don't just eat and drink. We have our Unholy Rollers Bicycle Club uh, every Sunday <laughs> at uh, 1, 1 p.m. And nice and slow rides so even beginners can come join us. Mm -hmm. uh, we also um, have a hiking group. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is Toastmasters. It, Toastmasters, yes. Uh, our own Toastmasters chapter, if anybody wants to improve their speaking skills ah. or leadership skills. Okay. Now, and once again, once again, reaching out to people who may be in the small towns, the really overwhelmingly rural parts of the state. A few last words. If you're not sure whether there's a local group in your area, contact us, and we will do our best to put you in touch with them. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Or to help you get one started. Right. All right. Well, I want to thank both of you for being on this week's edition of It Could Be You. And we've only just scratched the surface in some areas. There's a lot more that I'd like to... Um, uh, to find out from you from free thinkers and to share the wealth of information, the wealth of knowledge with more people. So the door is going to remain open for Arkansas Society of Free Thinkers to come back on. It could be you in the not too distant future. We really appreciate you having us on, John, and we will be glad to come back. Absolutely, right. been lots of fun. Okay. <laughs> well, with that in mind, we're just about out of time. I did want to before. Uh,